Howdy, this here's Paul again, and we're fixing to have us another little Sunday school lesson. Now, today's lesson, the title is Pilot, What is Truth? I think the lesson is appropriate for what's going on today. People have lost sight of what truth is, and they're even arguing over what is truth. Uh, so this is not a new argument. Uh, Solomon said everything that has been will be again. I'm paraphrasing there. Uh, but I'm going to read the text, which is out of John 18, 28 through 40. The related scriptures, and these, now listen, these related scriptures are important. They give the story body. If you go back and read this, it explains most, will, will explain most of your questions. Uh, like in Isaiah 53, 1 through 9, is prophesied. Way back yonder, what was going to happen to Jesus. And then you get to Matthew 27, 11 through 18, and then over to 20 and 24. Uh, they, uh, they all correspond. I mean, it's not just one person telling this story. This is evidence uh, of what really happened because we've got... Uh, we're in John, and then they got Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They also uh, wrote down the same stuff. Uh, Mark 15, 1 through 15, and then Luke 18, 32 through 33, and Luke 23, 1 through 25. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to read the text here. Like I said, it's John 18, 28 through 40. And I'm going to read the text here, and... Uh, then we'll try to delve into and find us some more truth. That's capital T R U T R U T H, because uh, Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. <clears throat> Lord God, I thank you for the privilege of coming before the throne again, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the God uh, uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you do just exactly what you say you'll do. Uh, you are the truth. And Lord God, I pray as, as people listen to this lesson that it opens hearts and minds and gives people some some uh, uh, idea that uh, they need to dig into the scriptures. I just uh, want to draw more folks to you, Lord, and that's my only aim. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right. <clears throat> John 18, 28, and following. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? And they answered and said unto him, If he, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. And the, judge, the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be filled which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing, <clears throat> excuse me, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto him, them, I find in them no fault at all. 
but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one of the one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they then cried they all again to say, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a, a, a robber. Now, it, it's not lost on us what Barabbas' name means is a, a son of the father. But they got the wrong son of the wrong father here to get released. Let me get down here to my notes and we can get started on this. Here we go. <sighs> In a time when much of modern day thinking rejects the reality of objective knowledge, it is becoming more difficult for many, many people to recognize the truth when they see it. In fact, the concept of truth has become outdated and old-fashioned to many modern critics of Christianity. Jesus Christ stands in direct confrontation with the relativism of today's societal climate. He not only brought a timeless message of truth to the world, indeed he is the very embodiment of truth. We cannot deal honestly with the teachings and the person of Jesus while attempting to sidestep the truth. Some things are true and other things are false. Modern theories aside, some things cannot be refuted. Truth starts with understanding who Jesus is and what his mission is all about. Now in this lesson, we aim to be clear that Jesus was tried by the Roman authorities to fulfill prophecy. Go way back to Isaiah 53, uh, starting in verse 1, and it tells exactly what's going to happen to Jesus. And I don't know exactly how many years. I want to think it's 700 years before Jesus ever was ever born. Isaiah told what was going to happen. And we need to recognize Jesus as king of divine origin bearing witness to the truth. And we need to submit to the rule of Jesus over our lives and to know the objective knowledge is possible through a relationship with Christ. It ain't about religion. Now, in order to complete their plan to execute Jesus, the Jewish leaders needed something to get the Romans on board because uh, back around 6 or 7 B.C., uh, the Romans uh, made it illegal for them to kill. Otherwise, they would have carried Jesus down there and stoned him outside the gates of the city if they could have, but they couldn't. They had to have the Romans in on this. However, when it served their purposes, they were willing to work with the Romans. The Jews detested the Romans. This is an unusual reliance here. The man who was key to the success of Annas and Caiaphas' plot was Pontius Pilate, the Roman pr procurator of Judea. And our lesson this week turns to, ex to his examination of Jesus. Jesus had been questioned by Annas and Caiaphas, and their next step in getting him executed was to convince the Roman leaders, that he was a threat worthy of death. By this time, they had already condemned Jesus to death as a blasphemer under Jewish law. That's Mark 14, 63 and 64. But since they were under Roman rule, however, they did not have the authority to execute any criminal. And like I said, that goes back to 6 or 7 B.C. Uh, uh, when the Romans... Uh, come in there and tell them you you just can't kill nobody unless we tell you you know we 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 the one we are the top law in this land. See, therefore they needed Pilate to carry out their sentence. Now the Jewish rulers and the officers were religious, but they wasn't righteous. They would not enter Pilate's house because 
uh, to go into a Gentile home would have made them ceremonially unclean and unable to eat the Passover. Well, they were uh, unwilling to defile themselves in this way, but they had no problem of killing a man on spurious charges. They celebrated Passover, but they wanted to crucify the very one who gave it. While they would reject Jesus' claim to be the Son of God, if they were righteously worshiped of God, they would have known that his claims were true. John uh, 8, 42, 46, and 47. Pilate did not adhere to or understand the Jewish religious practices, but he did not flout them. Therefore, he met them outside and asked them what they charged Jesus with. The religious leaders did not answer with a particular accusation. Rather, they sanctimoniously blustered that they would not have brought Jesus to Pilate if he were not a criminal. Understandably, Pilate immediately tried to dismiss this case, excuse me, dismiss this case and told the Jews to judge Jesus according to their own law. They responded by stating that it is unlawful for them to execute anyone. See, they already had passed a sentence on him before they'd even heard anything. Since Jesus was convicted of blasphemy, albeit with highly suspect evidence, they would have stoned him to death outside the gates if they could have. That's Leviticus 24, 16, and then John 8, 59. John also shows that these proceedings fulfilled a prophecy of Jesus himself about his death. He would die, John 19, 32. In John 12, 32 through 33, John demonstrates that Jesus' references to being lifted up are a prediction of his crucifixion. Pilate re-entered the judgment hall and called Jesus to him. He then asked him directly if he was king of the Jews. He needed to find out if Jesus posed any political threat to Rome. That's all he cared about. He had no reason or interest in Jewish affairs or customs, only Rome. He was there to look out for Rome's good. He was there to make sure that Roman rule was followed. He didn't care about the Jews. Jesus asked Pilate if he was asking this question of his own or if someone else was directing him. Pilate sarcastically asked him if he was a Jew likely indicated that he not care about Jewish disputes. He said, am I a Jew? You know, rhetorical question. Pilate further stated that Jesus' own people had delivered him over to him, and he now wanted to know what he had done. And Jesus returned to the questions about his kingship and stated that his kingdom is not of this world. In other words, it is of divine origin and substance. If it were this world, then his followers would come and fight for him. Undeterred, Pilate replied, so you are a king. I can just hear the sarcasm in his voice. Jesus confirmed that he was correct in saying that he was a king. He, in that, he then added that he had been born to bear witness to the truth. Pilate dismissed that thought with an abrupt, what is truth? Hold, hold that thought just a second. In explaining his kingdom to Pilate, the main idea that Jesus conveyed was the word truth. Emphasizing, it seems, the spiritual nature of the kingdom, there may have also been underlying polemic 
against the kingdoms of this world that are built on falsehood. Therefore, Pilate mocked what is truth in John 18, 38. To the world, truth is not absolute but subjective. Depending on who is talking it or what group of people might benefit or suffer. I just had to interject that part right there. Because that's today. That is today. People don't know what truth is today. And they question truth. Anyway, Pilate then went back out to face the crowd and declared that he found Jesus not guilty. He then mentioned the custom that he and the Jews had at Passover, the release of a prisoner. He suggested they might release Jesus, their king, at the Passover feast. But the Jewish leaders and the crowd, however, rejected the release of Jesus. Instead, they asked for the release of a prisoner named Barabbas. The Jews re rejected the true son of the father in favor of a robber, a rebel, and a murderer. Now, we should bow in worship and submission to our crucified and risen king. Pilate did not want to crucify Jesus or get involved in Jewish disputes. He underestimated the, the leader's desire for Jesus' blood, however, and found that they were insistent on executing him. They had it in their mind they was going to execute him before they even questioned him. They had wanted to kill Jesus for a long time. Their opportunity had finally come, and Pilate was inching closer to giving it to them. Lord God, I thank you for this lesson. I've learned much from it. Lord God, I hope this falls on good ground. And Lord God, it calls more people to the kingdom. Lord God, you are our truth. And Lord God, we depend on the truth of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.